Today I'm going to take a blurry photo from my phone's camera roll and turn it into a pen and watercolor painting. Let's get started. All right, I'm getting ready to turn my blurry phone photo into a painting. So here I'm taping down the edges of my paper so that they don't curl up. I know I'm gonna be using a wash on my paper today. The paper I'm using is a five by seven paper. I like the smaller papers because you don't have to be as detailed. You can let our brain do all the hard work. When we look at a smaller painting, we can actually infer or figure out what those details are without them actually being there. So small papers are a great place to start so you don't feel the pressure to add all the detail. Sometimes when I'm doing just a little painting, I won't tape down all the edges. I'll just put some tape on the back or something. I'm just a little bit more, um, I don't know, conservative with my supplies sometimes, but um, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I just ordered some new tape, but I am running low, so I try to be a little bit careful. Now I want to try something new that I haven't done before. I'm going to be cutting a circle out of my tape to put in my sky for a moon. Now there is no moon in my um, photo on my camera roll that I'm looking at. However, it's just something fun I've been wanting to try. So I'm really just carefully curving my hand um, while I cut with my scissors. And then I'm going to go back and just kind of continue to trim. It helps that this tape is kind of papery feeling, so it's a little stiffer makes it easier to cut um, and then that'll keep the area where I want my moon to be clean from paint. So you can't really just tape a piece of paper down because the paint will soak in or cover it up. So you really have to use kind of a tape or even a contact paper and cut out that shape. Next I'm thinking about composition where I want the moon to go. At first in the middle could have been good. Maybe I want it low to the horizon. I ended up putting it up kind of high and I was going to change my mind but it's pretty stuck there so I think I'm going to leave it. Now I'm going to be doing a wash for my sky in the sky of my photo. That was like one of the main things I liked. It was very light pastel colors so I don't want a really dark paint. However, I do know that watercolor dries lighter than it looks when it's wet. So I want to make it a little brighter than I think I have to knowing it will dry lighter. The sky in my photo is mostly blue and then it transitions to yellow and then some pink at the bottom. And there is a little bit of green between the blue and the yellow, so I'm going to make sure that I can see that. But I don't want a lot of green in my sky. That can look just not right. We don't usually think of a green sky unless there's, you know, a storm brewing. So the green is just going to be barely there when I transition my colors. I'm keeping my blue really light and wet. And when I do my yellow, to avoid that green, I'm going to put my yellow below the blue first so I don't mix them right away. This will give my blue a chance to start drying so it's just not so bright when I do end up um, glazing over it with my yellow here. There, there's going to be a little bit of green where they touch. I'm oftentimes drying off my brush while I do a wash because I don't want puddles. If there's puddles, then that water is going to dry at a different rate. It'll dry slower and that can create unwanted hard lines or kind of these bubbly edges that I just don't want. So I want my paper to stay the same wetness across the whole thing. So make sure to keep kind of drying your brush off, if, especially if it holds a lot of water to make sure that doesn't happen. Last, I'm moving down to my pink or my red. Pink is just a light red, so you'll use your red paint if you're doing this with me, but otherwise I'll use my red paint and I'll fill in right underneath that yellow. Um, I'm just going to make it not super dark because I want to keep that pastel color, but I'm also keeping in mind that I'm going to be actually using some red in my landscape later too because the ground of my picture is where um, the sunlight is reflecting during a sunset and it looked like the trees were almost on fire. That's what really drew me when I first took the photo. So I'm knowing that I'll be using some red in the bottom of my painting later, but it'll be darker than this sky. So it's another reason I want to keep the sky lighter so it looks like it's further away or behind the ground. Now, when I look back at my photo, I notice that there's really not a ton of yellow in my sky. It's more of the pink and the blue. So I think I'm going to um, make this yellow a little brighter and then I'm going to go back and kind of cover up some of it with that red and pink to get as close to my photo as possible. However, when you're painting a photo, you're the artist and you get to decide what to keep or get rid of. And so there really isn't a right or wrong way to do it. Uh, hence why I added the moon. It was something I thought would look nice. And even though it's not in the photo, there aren't really rules that you have to stick to your photo 
unless someone has hired you to recreate the photo. But when you're just making art, you get to decide what to do and how to do it. So here I'm going back to add a little bit more of that pink on top of the yellow, just so there's not so much of the yellow showing. I'm going to go ahead and speed up through my hair drying process. Now, the tree line in my picture is, again, it's that kind of thing that looks like it's on fire. So I'm going to use some reds and browns. In fact, I have some kind of already mixed in my palette, so I'm going to use up that first. But I'm using red to make it kind of that warm tone, but I don't want it to be bright red. I want it to be more neutral, so I'm adding those browns with it. First, I'm just kind of planning out where that edge is going to be, and then I can go back and using the pointy part of my brush, I'm kind of dabbing and pushing up to make those little treetops nice and pointy, sticking off the top. However, because it's still wet, it all looks like one big bunch of trees. There are some little highlights in my landscape that I'm going to try to keep, so I'm kind of trying to skip over some of those areas to leave some brighter, lighter spots as I go and move down the page. The first layer is always kind of just smooth and I can go back and add my texture as I'm painting it or as it starts to dry. However, before it dries, I think I'll add some of the looser texture. When I'm dotting my brush and the paper is still a little bit wet, I'm gonna get that suggestion of a bunch of trees without making those harsh edges. So while your paper is wet, do that kind of far away layer um, to make sure that things look blurry and far away. And then as it dries, I can add then the harsher lines and the higher contrast of the different areas in my landscape. One thing I'm doing with these bunches of dark areas are making kind of clusters of trees. By putting those dark dashes in groups, it makes it look more realistic because the trees are not evenly spaced. There are some clumps of dark and clumps of light to make that feel more really random. Now one thing I want to include is where the um, reflection of the sun, where the trees kind of look like they're on fire, ends and the regular shadows begin. So about halfway down my tree groups, I'm going to add some gray and black sort of shadows so I can see where the sun is setting behind me and how it's not on showing on all of the trees. So I'm going to go and kind of make a wash over, but then make sure to keep some of that tree texture. Um, I always make these washes go all the way to the bottom, even if I know I'm going to cover them up, because it just keeps consistency across my painting. And then once it dries, I can always go on top of it, as long as things are getting darker. If I ever know I want something to be lighter, then I can't cover it up with a darker color, because watercolor, you can't cover up dark with light. <laughs> Now, there was one thing in my picture I wasn't sure if I was going to include. I mentioned I took the photo out the car window, and so there is some road in my reference photo, but I didn't know if I'd really want that, if I wanted to focus on the trees. Um, but now that I look at it, it just feels kind of flat with the trees alone, so I think I'm going to go ahead and add that curved road that I was on, um, and that'll just give a little bit more context to the picture and allow opportunity for more details to happen. So I've got some darker color yet, and I'm curving that road just like how it was when I was on it. Um, and to make that effect happen while it's still wet, I can pull away some of the color and make that true curve apparent. Last but not least, to add a little more definition to the painting, I'm going to use one of my Micron felt tip pens to add some designs and details. So because this is actually kind of near the city and in the city, I think I'm going to add some of those um, edge rails on the side of the road to just show that this is a kind of highway road, not just a back county road. Maybe I'll add some uh, light posts and things sticking up. When I look at my reference photo, there are some things kind of sticking up even out of the trees and off in the distance. So again, if I can just suggest where those things are, I don't need to make them perfect or exact because they are so small that your eye will just fill in and finish the details of it. So I can just kind of put the general shape or the general line of where it goes. And by looking, when you look at it, you know what it is because it's just um, almost real or almost exact. The big thing I'm paying attention to is size. So these lampposts, I made them smaller as they get further away to make it look more realistic. 
and things way off in the distance should also be fairly small. So little electrical lines, poles, kind of the edge of a road off in the distance, maybe some other things sticking up. I'm just going to go ahead and play around with those uh, pen details for a bit. One more thing I also did with the pen besides the industrial is adding lots of little kind of bumpy zigzaggy lines for the tops of trees. Again, it just kind of adds some contrast and definition and I think helps make it look a little bit more defined. Now I finally get to tear off that piece of tape very carefully. I'm using the edge of my nail to peel it back and I'm left with a nice clean white circle. Now, if I were to do this again, I think I would make that circle much smaller. Um, however, it's there, it's what it is, and I think I'll add some shadows to it because the moon is not bright white. It almost looks more like a sun in this case, so I'm kind of mixing some blues and grays. And to make the shadows, I'm not going to cover it all. I'm just going to kind of randomly jump around and fill in bits and pieces of it. Um, I don't want it super dark, so at first it kind of got dark and then I cleaned off my brush and spread around what was already there so it doesn't get super dark um, and then have those shadows. I realized after drawing the kind of cool gray shadows that it didn't really match the color scheme of my artwork. So I went back and added some warmer um, kind of browns on top of those shadows to make it fit more with my warmer tones down on the ground. This just helps the moon feel more connected to the piece. Um, since it wasn't really there in the original photo, I have to do some kind of guessing and checking to see and make sure that it fits alongside my other colors. So I think that warmer, those warmer tones really helped instead of the cool bluish gray I had done initially. Now finally time for the reveal where I get to tear off the tape. Whenever I'm tearing off the tape in my paintings, I'm careful to kind of keep the tape flat on the table but peel away from the paper. You don't want to pull straight up or it can risk tearing the paper. There really usually isn't a perfect peel. Some of your paper is bound to tear, but you just wanna take your time until you get the feel of how your tape sticks and works to the paper as you peel away. This was drafting tape that I used today. You can also use painter's tape to whatever comes off nice and clean. There I have my painting. Your very last thing to do is make sure to sign your masterpiece. I like to use my initials on the front and then I sign my full name and date on the back. And there we go, I've taken a blurry photo from my phone and turned it into an enjoyable work of art I can hang or display. If you enjoyed watching along today, um, I'd love if you liked the video and commented below your thoughts. You can also subscribe to my channel to get updates on tutorials and other videos that I share or find me on Instagram as well. See you later.